Good evening. I'm so glad you're here for our candlelight service. Obviously because of the snow and the roads that are less than ideal, our numbers are down. About 2,000 years ago, when Mary and Joseph entered into Bethlehem, and soon Mary would give birth to the baby Jesus, the numbers were down. There were only a few. But there was a heavenly host that would announce his arrival. And this evening, as we worship together, our Lord Jesus is with us, and there's a heavenly host. And God is pleased. So again, thank you for braving the weather and coming out this evening. Let's worship together. Would you please stand for our call to worship? Sing to the Lord a new song. Sing to the Lord, all the earth. Glory to God in the highest heaven, peace on earth to all. The heavens are telling the glory of God. Let the earth rejoice, let trees of the forest sing for joy. Glory to God in the highest heaven, peace on earth to all. For a child is born for us, a son is given to us. In him was life, and the life was the life of all people. Take your red hymnals, we'll be singing from our red hymnal tonight. <coughs>
O God of the baby of Bethlehem, we come into your presence with praise and thanksgiving. We hear the glad tidings of angelic voices. We come to experience this good news of great joy for all people. As the shepherds travel to Bethlehem, we have traveled here, excited, expectant, and hopeful. Let the words of sacred scripture seep into our hearts to be treasured and pondered anew. We are here. We are ready, O God. Let the light of your love break forth. Amen. Please be seated. We have relit four candles. Each Sunday leading up to this night during the Advent season, we lit one candle, each candle representing something meaning of, meaningful for us, a message from Christ. And the four weeks of Advent, we have awaited the blessed hope of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Three candles symbolize gifts of Jesus Christ to us. And the fourth candle, peace, love, hope, and joy. And now tonight we light our Christ candle. Tonight is the night for which we have all been waiting. Our Advent wreath is, will now be completed by the lighting of our Christ candle. For to us a child is born, to us a son is given, and the government will be on his shoulders, and he will be called Wonderful, Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace. With the birth of Jesus, our lives have been changed. We light this candle to represent that Jesus Christ is Lord and Savior. He is the center of our lives. Amen. shineth in the darkness, and the darkness comprehendeth it not. <laughs> and worship God the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit uh, in our singing, in the preaching of the word, and in the giving of our tithes and our offerings. So we're going to wait on our ushers now to receive our Christmas Eve offering.
Christmas story. In the sixth month of Elizabeth's pregnancy, God sent the angel Gabriel to Nazareth, a village in Galilee, to a virgin named Mary. She was engaged to be married to a man named Joseph, a descendant of King David. Gabriel appeared to her and said, Greetings, favored woman. The Lord is with you. <clears throat> Confused and disturbed, Mary tried to think what the angel could mean. Don't be afraid, Mary, the angel told her, for you have found favor with God. You will conceive and give birth to a son, and you will name him Jesus. He will be very great and will be called the Son of the Most High. The Lord God will give him the throne of his ancestor David, and he will reign over Israel forever. His kingdom will never end. Mary asked the angel, But how can this happen? I am a virgin. The angel replied, The Holy Spirit will come upon you, and the power of the Most High will overshadow you. So the baby to be born will be holy, and he will be called the Son of God. Mary responded, I am the Lord's servant. May everything you have said about me come true. And then the angel left her. Let's turn to number 116 on our handbooks. Time came for her baby to be born. 
she gave birth to her first child, a son. She wrapped him snugly in strips of cloth and laid him in a manger because there was no lodging available for them. staying in the fields nearby, guarding their flocks of sheep. Suddenly, an angel of the Lord appeared among them, and the radiance of the Lord's glory surrounded them. They were terrified, but the angel reassured them. Do not be afraid, he said. I bring you good news that will bring great joy to all people. The Savior, yes, the Messiah, the Lord, has been born today in Bethlehem, the city of David. And you will recognize him by this sign. You will find a baby wrapped snugly in strips of cloth, lying in a manger. 
Suddenly, the angel was joined by a vast host of others, the armies of heaven, praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest heaven, and peace on earth to those with whom God is pleased. Let's turn in our hymn books to number 141. 
in Judea, they said, for this is what the prophet wrote. And you, O Bethlehem, in the land of Judah, are not least among the ruling cities of Judah, for a ruler will come from you, who will be the shepherd of my people, Israel. Then Herod called for a private meeting with the wise men, and he learned from them the time when the star first appeared. Then he told them, Go to Bethlehem and search carefully for the child, and when you find him, come back and tell me so that I can go and worship him too. After his interview, the wise men went away, and the star they had seen in the east guided them to Bethlehem. It went ahead of them and stopped over the place where the child was. When they saw the star, they were filled with joy. They entered the house and saw the child with his mother Mary, and they bowed down and worshipped him. Then they opened their treasure chests and gave him gifts of gold, frankincense, and myrrh. <laughs> season. It's here that we learn first of the ministry of John the Baptist. And he makes it very clear that he's not the promised one. He's only a messenger. He's the forerunner of Jesus Christ. And scripture teaches us that Jesus is holy, pure. He is born without sin. And then later on in the same chapter, in verse number 29, it reads like this. The next day, John saw Jesus coming toward him and said, Look, the Lamb of God who takes away the sins 
of the world. Our Jesus, the Lamb of God, the Lamb of God, a man with no fault, a man who lived his entire life doing only good, the Son of God, holy and pure. And yet we learn in verse 11 of the same chapter that he came to his own people and remember what it said? It said, they rejected him. Jesus was despised. He was rejected. And at the age of 33, he was nailed to a cruel cross. And he died for the sins of the world. And it's this same Jesus during this Christmas season, a season of joy, and we sing the hymns that we love singing, joyous hymns of glad tidings and goodwill. It's the same Jesus that we sing about who was ignored. The same Jesus. They pushed him aside. And today, 2,000 years later, he's still being rejected. J.K. Rowling, uh, you recognize the name, she is the author of the Harry Potter books. And she's now a global brand. I just read the other day she is worth an estimate 15 billion, that's a B, 15 billion dollars. She's recognized as the most highly paid author in the world, and she earns about $95 million a year. Not bad. Recently, she gave an interview, and she was asked, is it true that you had nine rejections uh, before your first Harry Potter novel was published? What advice would you offer to new novelists working to their first manuscript and it's published, publishing. And she replied this way, I'm not sure that there were nine rejections, but there are certainly a few. I would say persevere. If everyone, of course, has turned you down, then maybe write something else. Try again. But some great writers had lots of books rejected before they got published. And then she said this, don't lose heart. That's good advice for all of us who have been rejected, who are going through difficult times, who are wondering with a big question mark in our future. Don't lose heart. 2,000 years ago in this little town of Bethlehem, it's just a hick town. Not many people are living there. And here's a very simple, ordinary couple. They're named Joseph and Mary. And she's pregnant. And they're dirty. And they're tired. And they've been traveling many miles. They need a room. <laughs> Mary's about to have this baby. The innkeep innkeeper, he takes one look at this couple who obviously can't pay. And he rejects them. He turns them away. Maybe he was kind enough to point them to a barn and one little corner of the barn where they could spend the night 